pivotal person well, in my legal career? Many of my mentors were teachers and professors. I think if I had to look at one person as a role model, that would be Tom Moyer, our late Chief Justice. I can't think of a better example of judicial temperament and professionalism. And like him, I, I love the court. I love the court as an institution, and I think, I think he did too. Your name came up several times in this year to run for the, uh, the Brown seat. Why, in the end, did you go for it? I just decided it wasn't, that was not the right race for me. Um, I didn't feel that I had all of the support that I wanted uh, to go forward in 2012. And in hindsight, I'm glad that I didn't do that. It was part of that because you were both coming from Columbus that there was a geographic thing? That was certainly part of my thinking of, you know, I think anytime you think about a race, you think about where your base is. Um, but that, it, it, in the end, was an easy decision for me that it just, that was not the right time for me to run. Let me really shock you, Jim. I didn't even know she was thinking about it. <laughs> I just had no knowledge of it. I, I just didn't know about it. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the judicial philosophy and what you like as a judge? Sure. I, I think that my record as a judge shows that I, I construe the law strictly. Uh, I don't go outside it, but I think there's a little more to that, too. It's really understanding, first and foremost, that you serve the public. And what you do as a judge um, means that you need to rule fairly, quickly, timely, uh, clearly in serving the public, to always understand what your standard of review is, what your precedent is, and to remember that your role as a judge is limited. And I think if you stay within those boundaries, whether you are reviewing a statute or looking at precedent, that's always the first rule to follow. Justice French, what is your philosophy on the refusal of uh, respective cases involving parties that uh, will have perhaps a future done in the future? Yeah, it, it, I, I'm not even permitted to, to solicit or accept campaign contributions for more than a year from now, so that's well into the future. I think that the judicial conduct rules um, cover that sufficiently, and I will follow those rules to the letter. Do you have a, uh, I uh, just want to be the one to ask. You wanted to appoint a woman. What's, uh, what about the woman's perspective do you think is so important to the court? Well, I just um, I think, <coughs> you know, have a, look, we have three men on the court, and I, it wouldn't have been the end of the world had we had four men. And, uh, I, I guess I just. Um, I think that women a lot of times are the leaders in fighting for principle. Sometimes when, you know, I look at women around the world, I look at, the, uh, at some of the great, great leaders. I mean, one of the greatest leaders today in the world is uh, the Chancellor of Germany, Markle. I look at the efforts that were made in, uh, in Burma, uh, lady under house arrest for I don't know how many years, uh, very principled. I look at the women in Iran who marched in the streets. I mean, I just, I just think they just have this sort of thing about commitment to principle, and maybe it's because that's the way my mother was. That doesn't mean that men aren't that way. You know, I've talked about Sharansky or talk about Elie Wiesel, the great, great men. But, um, you know, I think when it comes to these kind of cases and judges, judgments and that, I, I like to have that perspective. And you know what? It's probably because uh, of my great love and respect for my mother that I'm, I feel this way. You know, I'm so glad I'm our chief of staff, first woman chief of staff coming in with a new governor. You know, the work of Diane Bry, I mean, Tracy Intahar, I mean, we have a lot of, you know, Kim Kuchba. We have a lot of women that are very active in the administration. And um, I don't think we should just have all women, but we certainly shouldn't have all men. And I'm really proud of. Uh, of a Tracy Plough who runs mental health. I mean, it's just the way I kind of think about things. So that wasn't the, the, the only thing, uh, but it was really convenient that when they brought me a narrowed down list, there was a woman in there, and as you, as you stand here and watch her, I'm, I'm, I'm more happy than I was when I walked in the room. So I think it's a, it'll be a great day for Ohio women, for young women, for people like my daughters and, uh, and beyond that for the state of Ohio. And by the way, from here going forward, this room, as far as I'm concerned, will now be referred to permanently as the Lincoln Room. This is where we work. This is where Abraham Lincoln was. And uh, so our staff now calls it the Lincoln Room. So when you're coming to a press conference and they say it's in the Lincoln Room, you'll know where it is. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.